Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. Today's topic of discussion will be in patience, which is very appropriate appropriate for our plan for today. Uh, but for those of you who are just joining us, I do I do want to go through a quick little summary of what we've been going through so that you're uh, not lost on what we're doing. We are currently on our way out to Beagle Point. We've already started, we've already crossed through the center of the galaxy, having started all the way back here in the bubble, visiting Sagittarius A-Star, the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. Be sure to go back and look at that episode if you missed that one and we're currently right here making our way out into this region here where beagle point is let's go up go ahead and get off the ground i would typically go through a little uh whoops how did that just happen we must not we must not have been able to get enough speed to really okay i'm not sure what just happened there <laughs> we must not have been able to build up enough speed to do any serious damage to anything, and uh, the shields didn't go anywhere. I thought I just made a very bad mistake, but whatever. It worked, and I didn't, so... <laughs> oh, uh... I think it's you? Okay, there we go. Anyways, I would typically go through... I was distracted by trying to do my intro and talk at the same... or talking to fly at the same time. <laughs> Uh, I would typically uh, go through a little intro for what the plan is. Our, our purpose for this journey has been exobiology, working to um, get the elite status uh, as high up into the elite ranks as we can with that, as well as making enough money to buy a fleet carrier. Um, I've gotten kind of impatient lately, and I kind of just want to take this episode to get some distance down. We would typically stop and do searching for planet, or searching for exobiology signals and things like that. But uh, I think that today we're just going to do 30 sol 30 ish solid minutes of just jumping and getting a bunch of jumps down because. We still have 187 jumps until our next waypoint, which isn't even in the sector that we're trying to get to. Oops, wrong. Wow, I'm just batting a thousand today. Press the R key instead of the F key, which is what I have set for my. <laughs> this is what I have set for my jumping. All right. Anyways, let's get on to this journey. <laughs> As I was trying to say, we would typically stop in a system, uh, do a discovery scanner, full spectrum system scan, look for some bio biological signatures and things like that. But uh, I think that today we're just going to do as many jumps as we can in the typical 30-ish uh, minute time limit that I usually set. So right around the 25 minute mark or something like that, we will start looking for a body to set down on because I still want to make sure we're, you know, setting down on a planet. You don't need to do that, I just like to because uh, that's how I roll. <laughs> so as I said, today's uh, topic of discussion is going to be impatience, which is very important, which is very appropriate for the fact that we are going to just be trying to get some distance down because I'm impatient to get to Beagle Point and sell off our data. I have struggled with impatience my entire life. It is something that uh, I think most of us struggle with, but some of us deal with it worse than others. I definitely am on, I'm definitely on the bad end of the spectrum when it comes to impatience. Um, obviously, you can't, sometimes you can do something about things and your impatience allows you to put forth extra effort to just hurry up and get things done, but other times, your impatience just makes your life harder because there isn't anything you can do about whatever. Of course, I decided I decided to just do jumping today, and now we're getting perfect systems every time. This is what I'm talking about. This is the bad luck that I have with everything that I do. <laughs> but I, I really want to get you know I really want to get as many jumps as we can down. If we can get like 20 or 30 jumps, I don't know. Uh, I, I think you can, I think I can typically if I can get into the groove, I can typically do you know two jumps a minute. So we should be able to get 50 or 60 jumps down if we can just keep it going and get in a groove and not, you know, screw it up too much. Uh, so, you know, I really struggle with... I really struggle with... Uh, well, let me say it this way. In my earlier years, I really struggled hard with impatience. Now, I'm not any more, I'm not really any more patient now than I was when I was younger, but I've learned the, to know the difference between... Um, things I can do something about and things that I can't do something about and you get to a certain point in your life where you start to realize that um, you know you're gonna feel impatient but you're not gonna be able to change your circumstance and so you have to get yourself to a place where you're not adding to that feeling of impatience by 
making even worse things happen that make your life even harder because now you're allowing yourself to stress out over your impatience. So now not only are you feeling the impatience, but now you're also feeling a lot of stress because you're you, you, you still you still think that there's something you can do about it and there isn't. <laughs> it's just not. So for example, uh, the situation for me is my YouTube channel. I'm impatient to get to the point where it's making enough money to where I can actually start to, you know, live off of it. <laughs> and that, you know, that, that's obviously a very arrogant and uh, arrogant assumption that I'm actually going to make it to that point. Um, you know, even though technically I'm in the top 1% of YouTube channels, channels as somebody who has made it to the point where I'm monetized and I'm a quote unquote YouTube partner, um, you know, I'm still, I'm still at the very bottom end of, you know, the paid spectrum of people. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about subscriber count necessarily. Um, I do value those of you who just have decided to subscribe to the channel and uh, come back and watch it. But a lot of people will subscribe to a channel when they see a video and then never come back and watch another one. Uh, whether that's just because they never end up clicking on another video or the YouTube algorithm never actually brings them another video for whatever reason. There's a lot of different reasons why somebody may subscribe to a channel and then never watch another video again. You know, there's, there, I have no control over that. So all I can do is just keep making videos and hope that uh, I will continue to experience growth. And, you know, the metric I'm really trying to focus on is just the, you know, uh, the average monthly income. This is what I'm talking about. Look how many body, look how many planets we've had, uh, systems we've gone into that have had 15 or less bodies in it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> 15 is the is the number that I set for the uh, for, for when we're going to do a full on scan of the entire system to find biological sources. Most of the time, we only find a couple of systems, uh, and then. We, or, or we find one within one or two jumps, so we make no distance and we spend our entire episode scanning. So I've been trying to find a balance between making a decent number of jumps every episode and doing a bunch of scanning, and it just seems like the last few episodes, while it's great to find all these biological sources, it's also making it take forever to get to where we're going. <laughs> uh, so, you know, at least when it comes to my YouTube channel, I'm, once I reached the 1,000 subscriber mark, I, I really stopped fixating on that number as much as I had because the 1,000 subscriber mark was the, you know, the, the, the artificial gate that, they, that YouTube has put in the way of you being able to make money off of your videos. So once I pass that point, while I still pay attention to it, you know, I, I keep I want my subscriber count to keep going up. I'm far, far, far more concerned with. Um, ad revenue and you know people choosing to uh, become channel members or thanks button the thanks button or things like that because in the in the end I'm trying to you know run a business here that's what I'm trying to turn this into I'm trying to turn this into my profession and you know when you go into a profession it's all about the money now obviously I don't want it to be just about the money I'm not gonna chase trends or do any of that stuff I'm gonna be me I'm gonna do what I normally do and I'm Hopefully it's good enough that I can get to a place where I'm making a decent amount of money. That's what I'd like to do. But the imp to bring it back to the topic of discussion, I'm just it's hard not to be impatient when you have thing when you have goals that you're trying to get to and it feels like it's taking forever to get there. Um, for me, I've already spent I, I was doing my channel off and on, off and on for a couple of years when I was still when I still had like a, a full gainful employment kind of job, uh, but I never really put a lot of effort into it. And then like the last the, the last year or last a little bit of a year, a little bit more than a year, um, I just haven't really been able to find a decent job. So I just I've been you know really focusing on my channel and trying to make trying to grow it, and it's it's showing results. You know I have. A decent. I have a, a good number of subscribers, and I'm starting to make. Uh, you know, I'm starting to make some money. Uh, I don't want to reveal numbers or anything, but I'm sure that if you did enough research, you could figure out uh, how much money a channel my size makes every month, and it's it's not a lot. <laughs> so you know, uh, I'm just I'm trying to keep plugging away at it and hope that I continue to watch that number go up every month because you know I'd like it to get to the point where I'm able to live off of this income and start traveling. We you know we did move in, uh, we finally moved back into our RV, our travel trailer, my my travel trailer. Uh, I know that for a lot of people you're going to hear that and be like, what? <laughs> because you can't fathom the idea of 
not living in an apartment or a house or something like that. Me personally, I can't stand living in a in an apartment because uh, you end up having to share a wall with people and you're cramped in with a bunch of people and it's just ugh, ugh, I hate it. And then I don't like having a house because a where I live it's extremely expensive and then b lawn maintenance and things like that. And then C, if you're if you're somehow able to afford to own a house, then you have all the extra financial responsibility of having to fix things with your own money. And it's like, nah, I'm good. I live in my travel trailer. <laughs> but the biggest thing is, you know, we. I'm not retirement age. I I turned 41 earlier this year, so like I'm not old or anything. But we're at the age. Me and my wife are at the age now where we really want to try to figure out a way to go travel a little bit. Um. Despite serving 11 years as a United States Marine, I never left the United States, and clearly I'm not going to now because it's a travel trailer, but we, I never really got to do much traveling because I was just too focused on other things when I was younger, and now I'm at the point where I just I kinda wanna, I kinda wanna get into that. I just realized that I have a thing running that I need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I had another uh, thing recording my voice and it's not supposed to be on. So anyways, um, I'm just, I've spent a long time waiting to get to the point where, because I bought this travel trailer back in 20, early 2020. And, um, was it early 2020? No, it could It couldn't have been early 2020. I'm trying to think, it's a 2019, but I didn't, I don't remember buying, I think I bought it, I don't remember. <laughs> it's a 2019 uh, Winnebago Mini Plus. It's a 34 foot travel trailer. It's got opposing slides in the main room, which makes it feel massive in the, in the, in the, it makes it feel massive. Like a big open floor plan concept kind of thing. I really like this trailer and I'm, I'm excited to uh, take it around. We are, I'm, I'm currently volunteering for the park service. Uh, so that we're getting a free parking space and uh, I think free utilities, which is actually a big deal here in California. <laughs> that's, that's a that's a massive amount of money that gets eaten up just in electricity and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but anyways, I've just I've been impatient for a long time because I moved into this travel trailer for for two years. I moved in. I lived in it for two years, starting like four years, two, three years ago, something like that. I don't remember. Um, you know, and the intention was, is I was going to take my kids on little trips and things like that. And I was just going to live in it because I didn't want to live in an apartment. And rent, rent out here was continually going up and I got tired of having it jacked up on me. So I was like, move my travel trailer. But, uh, ever since then, I've just been really looking for trying, really been looking for a way to make mobile income because I want to get out on the road and start seeing the country. I actually want to start a travel channel as well, since I have the RV and you know, I could turn that into uh, a secondary channel, but I'm just, I'm really impatient to get started with all of that because I'm tired of just sitting around and waiting for life to happen. <laughs> As I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this video are feeling that same, pro same, same issue. Uh, you know, there's things you want to do in your life and you're just not able to get to it because money is a fa money is a factor. As much as we all wish that we could get away from that, uh, you know, we're just, we're not at a, the human civilization has not progressed to the point where people can just do what they want when they want and not have to worry about it. And unfortunately, the progress that we've made in the artificial intelligence space is uh, slicing out the middle, the middle tier work and not really alleviating any of the manual labor, a lot of the manual labor stuff. So the, all the robots that we, that we thought we were gonna have to take care of all the really hard physical labor stuff, that's still many years away. But uh, our office jobs are certainly getting taken. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I just, I started focusing on the YouTube thing because I want to I've always wanted to work for myself and I haven't really had a good idea for something that motivated me to try to go into business for myself. Um, I always kind of wanted to find to take someone else's dream and help them turn it into a thing and be like a partner in it because I've never really had anything that I was super interested in doing myself and that I felt I had a good chance of actually turning into something. Well, video games, though, video games is something I've been doing my whole life, and I'm, you know, 
after 20 plus, well, I guess it's 30 years, 30 plus years now, because I started playing video games when I was a little kid. After 30 plus years of constantly playing video games, uh, I would have to say I'm probably considered an expert. <laughs> But <laughs> I would have to I would have to modestly say that. And uh, I guess my personality has grown to the point where at least some of you guys enjoy hearing what I have to say and the way I have to say it. And you enjoy the games that I play and provide I'm providing you guys with some entertainment value. So that's a good thing. But uh, the story of the the story of everything is just, you know, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of hurry up and wait in life. Uh, if you've ever served in the military, you know what I'm talking about. It's a standard saying, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. You're in a rush to get things done, and then you get as much done as you can, and then you have to sit and wait for, th wait for the next thing to happen. And that's where I am right now in my YouTube career. It's, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of hurry up and get to a thousand subscribers, and now I'm waiting for money to start really rolling in and, <laughs> you know? It, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense in what I'm saying here. I'm just, I'm kind of trying to, uh, I'm trying to, I'm kind of trying to just keep talking so that there, there, this boring uh, jumping over and over again doesn't get too, uh, doesn't get too tiresome. That looks, that looks exceptionally bright. I don't remember seeing something that bright before. That looks kind of weird. I wonder what kind of star we're jumping to right now. Well, it just looks like a regular bright yellow star. <clears throat> so, you know, there's a lot of things in life where we all get impatience, uh, impatient. Every single person in the world gets impatient about something. I don't care how zen you might be, <laughs> you're going to you get impatient about something. We barely we barely uh, used up any fuel on that one. How many jumps have we gotten done? Mm, that doesn't look right. I feel like we should have a lot more jumps in. Were we at one... I thought we were at 160-something when we started this. I'm a little bit confused. I want to check. I think we're going to check our galaxy map here in a second, just so we can. Or I guess let me just double check and make sure that the number is going down. Yeah, it's going down. I just, uh, yeah, I have the mem I have the memory of a goldfish, so maybe maybe it was like 186. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm being a little bit dyslexic today. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. We need to. We just need to keep plugging away. Because as the theme of this episode is, I'm impatient to get to Beagle Point so that we can sell off our data and find out how close we are to a fleet carrier. Because if we... I thought I... I guess I didn't press the frameshift drive button. Because uh, if we're if we're pretty... If we have made the money that we need to make um, by the time we get to Beagle Point, then we'll just do several episodes of just flying back. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'll just maybe I'll just suck it up and sit down and grind out uh, flying all the way back in uh, like a day, a couple of days or something like that. Make a couple of episodes of just a few, like 30, 30, 30 minutes, 30 minute segments out of the however many hours it's going to take to jump back. I would like to invite those of you who watch my content regularly to feel free to leave suggestions for topics of conversation that you'd like me to cover while we're doing this. I know that uh, for a lot of people, you enjoy the ambiance of being in space, but I know at the same time, uh, most of you are staying and watching the videos for extended periods of time because I, I try to find interesting things to say while we're doing it. So it's kind of like a hanging out with friends kind of thing when we're flying around like this. And it's just got a nice little backdrop of space going on. I, I better be paying attention to this, huh? <laughs> the last thing we want to do is run into the star after we uh, narrowly avoided de dish, uh, getting a crap ton of damage done to us on the takeoff there. I don't, I don't know what happened with that. I had a little space out moment.
was I doing over here? 165? I don't remember what we started at. And I have no way of, like, uh, rewinding my recording until I'm done. So we're just going to... We'll just keep going to... We'll just keep... Let's go, let's go ahead and get down to, uh, what, 160? And then we'll start looking for a place to land. I think that's probably a good way to go. Three bodies there. It is so weird to look out and just see blackness. <laughs> Can you imagine actually being out here for real? I really wish I could experience that. I know it's never going to happen in my lifetime, but I don't know. They keep telling us that... Uh, uh, our generation is going to be the first generation that has the choice of whether we're going to die. Because at this point, they're going to start extending lifespan, and then by the time you get to the point where you... They're just going to keep extending lifespan, and, by, and, and before you get to the point where it's too late for you, they'll have ex extended it again, and then you'll live for a while, and they'll extend it again, and just keep extending it until, you're, until uh, you effectively have immortality. So that would be kind of cool. I think, depending on, depending on how it how it works, you know what I mean. I, I don't know. I don't know how comfortable I would be with uh, full on cyborg or anything like that. But if they came out with like some nano machines or whatever that uh, you just you inject in your body and they go around healing healing all of your damaged cells and uh, you know fixing all of that stuff, I think that would be something I could probably get on board with. It's just like it all depends on how it works. I don't know. I would love to be able to live for, you know, like, obviously, I don't know that I want to live forever, but I'd like to live to the point where I see humanity go out into space, and I get to go out into space and experience some of these things that I've been dream dreaming about my entire life. Uh, you know, everybody's going to have a point where they're like, all right, I'm done with this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I could, uh, if I could get to the point where I could be out there going out into the solar system and then maybe we crack the whole faster than light travel thing and we can actually start visiting other stars and all that kind of stuff i think that would be an awesome way to go all right we have to i, don't, I haven't really been paying attention to how many jumps we have so let's look at that either way we really should start looking for a place to set down because we don't have unlimited time for this six bodies in this system so we'll go ahead and do a full spectrum system scan on this guy ideally we will find ourselves a landable planet Oh, there's a biological source there, so we'll definitely go land on that one, unless one of these other planets has something better. Alright, so let's go scan some biology then. We're going to get the best of both worlds in all of this. We got a bunch of jumps in, and we get a biology at the end. It's probably going to be... up. Oh, say hello to the Milky Way from the other side. Uh, it's probably only going to be some bacteria, but that's okay. <clears throat> Let's uh, fast forward through this. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little pa a little uh, put a little cut in here so that you guys don't have to watch the 4300 light second uh, journey over here. And here we are approaching the planet that we need to land on. It happened to be the actual planet rather than the moon, so that's kind of cool. It's not usually how it works. Usually we're getting a, one of the moons because that's where most of the biology ends up being. But we're gonna go do a scan for this one, find out what's on it, and do a little bit of a little bit of exobiology too. I wasn't expecting to get any exobiology done, but uh, we got lucky and found a source. So let's go do that. <clears throat> I have to say, it has been super windy all day, and I'm not talking about like you're just you're, you're thinking, oh, the wind's constantly blowing. No, like the trees are the the tree trunks are swaying in the wind. <laughs> it's like really strong today. Partially because we're up on top of a hill, a very large hill. I, I hesitate to say mountain. It's not a mountain, but we're on the top of a very, very large mountainous type hill. Oh, seven probes. This is a big one. Uh, okay, so one. So we'll do back the back of the planet, the top of the planet, left and right of the planet. 
the bottom of the planet and then the front. And this sets us up so that all the probes will hit at about the same time. And then we can filter out the heat. Well, I guess there is no filtering out the heat map since there's only one biological source. But I would like to know what it is before we go take before we go set down and land, confirm that it's a bacteria, and then we can go. Yep, bacteria. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, I would like, since we're going to scan, to get around to the other side. Did I turn my super cruise assist off? It did. Sweet. So we're going to swing around. I'm going to turn off the turn off the analysis mode. Uh, are we just too far? Away? Are we just too far away to see? Do you have any sunlight? Let's, uh, Because hmm. I don't know where the star is. I think it's behind us. We came from the star, so that's kind of weird. I'm looking for this. I'm just going to kind of swing around. This may be a this may be a completely dark planet. I think this may be a dark planet, so we're just going to go down then. Weird. Get our night vision turned on then. Get our heat map turned back on so we can actually see what we're doing here. We're going to head towards that little area there. And I guess we're going to be doing this in the dark because there's no there's no light anywhere on this. I guess it's so far away from the star that it's not able to... There's no light over here. That's very strange. Maybe we'll find some really cool bacteria then. Very large planet, too. I'm not used to finding planets this large. Not with, like, bacteria. Not with the uh, biology on it, anyway. Usually, the smaller the body, the more different the more different types of biology you find on it. It's kind of weird that way. I almost always find five and six diversity biology on uh, little, little moons that only require, like, two probes to get it done. All right, so the problem that we're going to have here is that the problem that we're going to have here is that uh, let's see, hold on, analysis mode activated, and then I yeah I want this. So this is a trick that one of my one of my viewers gave me. If you bring out the what's it what's this called composition scanner, um, and if you fly over a biological source with the with the cursor then it will show it'll kind of it'll kind of blink at you so you can actually see it let's also get the lights turned on so that we can actually see uh we'll do this for like a minute and if we don't come across anything then we're just going to go ahead and set down because we're we're pretty close we're pretty at the end of the episode here and i don't want to spend a bunch of time doing this for a bacteria Seems like this place is pretty rocky anyway, so I don't know. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and just call it here. Anyways, hopefully you guys have been having lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button if you have so that the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and you will be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join button, check out the list of options available there, and decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a continuing commitment, you can click that thanks button. It's sort of like a tip for YouTube, and it will allow you to give a one-time contribution rather than signing up for a regular subscription. I'm just padding time because I'm trying to get on top of the ship here. Anyways, hopefully you guys have been having lots of fun on this journey with me. Be sure to come back for the next one so that you can uh, be there when we reach Beagle Point and see how much money we have. Thank you very much, and I will see you for the next one.